There we go. Good afternoon, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us this evening again on the social justice platform. Welcome to the CPD training for tonight. Um, our speaker for tonight, I think, as we said, does not need any introduction. Um, it is our very own Annika Greivenstein, and she's going to be speaking to us tonight about the co-parent app. Um, I don't think it needs a lot of introduction. I think we've spoken about this already and the excitement is starting um, about this at the conference last year. And we're also very excited to have um, Crystal and Kevin, welcome from Belgium. Um, it's nice to have you guys here. Um, this is partners of ours on the technology side, on the Wadi app that's going to be integrated with the system. So Annika, um, I think everybody online needs to hear from you. Annika is a master mediator and she is also a director of the Co-Parent app. And she is um, on the Exco for Social Justice Association of Mediator. And she's a personal friend and a mentor for many years for me. So Annika, to no further ado, please take the floor. Thank you, Teresa. Um, good evening, everyone. Um, it's a privilege to talk to you tonight. Um, I'm going to start um, to say that the co-parenting app um, we developed specifically with our mediators in mind. Um, it's also a platform for our parents, not only in South Africa, um, but also for in, in the rest of the world, where they can actually um, do dispute resolution um, in their homes. So with keeping that in mind, and I want you to listen to what I'm, I've got to say to you. And then in the last um, hour or half an hour, we're going to ask Crystal um, to tell us more about the mediation um, practice management software that is integrated um, into um, this whole ecosystem um, that we're developing. And the whole idea of the co-parenting app is to bridge that gap that we have um, between our parents in South Africa, because that, that's our primary um, 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 focus at this stage, and then also the mediators um, on the other side. So the co-parenting app was developed primarily for parents, but the resource directory um, and also um, the, the dispute resolution is specifically developed for our mediators. So whatever disputes we, we get from the app, we'll be able um, to send it straight into the ecosystem directly to the mediator if the mediator is not already connected to that specific matter. So with um, keeping that in mind, I just want to show you what the social justice um, scenario is looking like at this stage. We've got the co-parenting app that, that's linking all of these partners um, going forward. Everything on your right-hand side is part of the non-profit um, organization side. As you can see, the Social Justice Association is part of the non-profit the foundation. The Social Justice Maintenance Services, it's a free service to the public where they can actually submit their maintenance orders should they not um, I want to work with a co-parenting app where they've got the shared calendars and everything going forward and then the GBV and the Social Justice Hope is also part of the non-profit side. I'm not going to spend time on that tonight. And then our affiliated partners, that's the people that's actually going to use the practice management software. In other words, if there's going to be any um, requests for mediation um, on, on, on new requests for a parenting plan or a divorce or whatever the case may be, it's going to come in through the app um, or it's going to come in through our lead generation system with all the marketing that we're going to do going forward um, and the people that's on the practice management software part of the um, ecosystem will get the first option um, to actually mediate the matter um, going forward. So with all of that in mind, I want you to look at the big picture of why did we actually um, develop the co-parenting app. 
who's looking after our children? Now, this is statistics that we got from um, SA statistics, so it's not our statistics. Um, the, how they actually got the statistics, I've got no idea, but I'm going to share it with you anyway, because it's actually quite a big concern um, in the, the big picture of the, what we're dealing with. Only 4% of our fathers are looking after their children. In other words, they are the primary caregivers of our children in South Africa. 42% um, of our children in South Africa stay primarily um, with mothers. 21% of our children in South Africa stay with no parents, and neither biological parents at all. 33% of all children in South Africa stay with both biological parents. If you take this further, and you look at the statistics, we have got 200,000 new maintenance applications per annum at the Department of Justice, at the Maintenance Court. We've got 1.1 million registered births in South Africa. There's a very big gap between all of these statistics and they don't actually talk to each other. What's happening to all of these children um, that we're not reporting, that we, we don't put through alternative dispute resolution, that's not applying, um, parents that's not applying for maintenance, our unwed fathers going forward. Can you see what we are actually dealing with? Bearing that in mind, I want to um, start talking to you about the co-parenting app that we've developed. This was a process of a period of about three and a half to four years. This co-parenting app was developed specifically to simplify communication um, with your co-parent. Things that we've put in very specifically is that, that it's color coded. In other words, all the aggressive colors has been taken out of the color palette. So if you're going to, we're going to talk about the shared calendar for parents. And if you're going to look at the shared calendar, you will see that there's no ag aggressive colors in. Um, it's ensuring that parents are always informed. Um, there's a, a very specific um, area where um, you can actually share expenses or you can share a happy moment um, or you can share many things, but parents are informed. As soon as you load anything on the app, the other parent will get a notification to go and have a look. Is, um, is there a happy moment? Is there maybe a school function that you need to attend? And in the end of the day, it's all about the well-being um, of our children. Now, now we made the co-parenting app. The whole idea was to make this journey between parents easier and less stressful. And then the main focus for us is to give them access to professional systems. In other words, the mediators and the service providers that we will be loading on the directory will be pre-approved. It will be service providers that's NAPFAM accredited, that properly trained. Um, we work in terms of international standards and this neutral communication platform will eventually get to a point where parents in South Africa will actually reach out for the professional assistance um, that they need. The professional assistance, I will talk about that a little bit more, but this is just an overview of um, what this is all about. Teresa, I think there's people in the, um, in the waiting room and trying to get in, if, if, I, if I'm not mistaken. Now, what kind of categories of co-parenting apps do you get? If you look at um, Google Play and um, Apple, um, and Howie, and the Play Stores, you will see that most of the co-parenting um, apps that's available is not a multifunctional co-parenting app. They either address um, scheduling and um, calendars or they are expense trackers. But 
our app is the first app in South Africa that actually talk about a multifunction co-parenting app. In other words, we address both parental rights and responsibilities. And by going forward, I will I will exact I will show you how we actually do that. Now, why an app? Not, why did we um, go back and, 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 and sit down and spend three and a half years, almost four years, trying to develop this co-parenting app? The main reason for that is, is to make it cost effective. We need to build a bridge, um, like I said previously, between our parents in South Africa that, that need the help, although they don't necessarily get it because they can't and go to the ports or it's too, too expensive or whatever the case may be. We all know um, the reasons why why parents don't report um, and they don't actually um, become part of the, the justice system. The co-parenting act is actually the least expensive route to go. And the main reason for that is that it's something that they can actually download from Google. They're going to pay a 50 rand per annum um, subscription fee. And they will have um, the resource directory and um, everything in hand. It's less than a, a taxi fare. Um, for our um, some of our parents going to um, the local magistrate's court or children's court trying to find help. The whole goal of the app was to avoid co-parenting disputes. Now you're going to say to me, yes, but now are you taking away um, the work of the mediator? That's not what we're trying to do at all. This is a resource specifically um, in mind for mediators. I don't know about you, but many times I actually um, end up in a mediation room and then I sit with clients where they say to me that I need a, a shared calendar and a specific times and dates for the next two or three years. As mediators, we don't have the time to sit down and calculate um, a shared calendar um, for two or three years. It dealt with a matter um, about three years ago where um, the parties insisted on something like this. And we actually um, did the whole exercise of this shared calendar for three years. But it was a quite a big exercise, but we got the, I got the parties to, to actually do it themselves. It took almost four months to do it. And at the end of the four months, the whole scenario changed. And we had to start all over again. There was new circumstances that we need to take into consideration. Now, part of the um, 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 co-parenting app is actually typical um, scenarios that we've preloaded um, in the app. So as a mediator, you can use the app when you do your um, and parenting plans to say this is the options it's child appropriate and um, it's typical scenarios and um, and then you can continue to actually customize it for that specific family because although we want to um, actually make parents um, or put them in specific boxes it's not possible to do that but you've got a basic idea then and for a certain period, a, month, a year or three years or five years, um, which they can actually see what is this actually going to look like if if you um, populate um, the co-parenting calendar for them, they can see it. And it's in your hands as, as a mediator. Another thing that we saw in, specifically in, in the United States, because they are just the forerunners when it comes to most of the things that we do is that um, the co-parenting app actually reduces co-parenting problems in high profile cases. We want to convince our um, bench, in other words, our judges and our magistrates um, to actually um, 
specify in their court orders that parents should use a co-parenting app. And the main reason for that is in the co-parenting app, for example, we've got the um, language um, filter. Once you've sent a message from one parent to another parent, it's captured, you can't delete it. And the whole scenario that we deal with as mediators on a regular basis is that typical scenario of he said, she said, um, this happened, this didn't happen, but I said this and I said that. Um, we, we've we even tried, or I've even tried with WhatsApp groups and then um, my parties will um, delete the message after a while, but the message has actually gone through. You can't do this on a co-parenting app. Um, you need to be aware of, so there's a history, that's the long and the short of it. And we do believe that it's going to minimize the opportunities for conflict. So again, we're back to it's a neutral communication platform for parents, but the assistance directly to help parents, this hotline for dispute is something that they're going to have in their hands um, at home. And they will be able to actually um, make contact with an alternative dispute resolution practitioner um, to get the assistance um, that they actually need. Currently, the co-parenting app is available um, in two ways. You can go to Google Play. Um, we were hoping that it's actually live in how we play. Um, it's in the final review stages in, in the How We Play store and also in Apple. Uh, the IT guys tell me it's going to be live tomorrow. I would like to say, you know what, let's check it next week because me and IT, um, and when it comes to deadlines, it's just two different things. So at this stage, it's definitely live in Google Play. So you can go to Google Play if you search Google Play Store and you put in co-parent, um, you will find um, find it under um, co-parent and that's the um, social justice or the co-parenting app that belongs to our ecosystem. So you're going to download it. Alternative way of doing it is actually to going, going to our website where it's going to give you the links to download the co-parenting app so that you can actually test it and play with it. There's a free trial period um, and that also helps a lot to give parents the opportunity um, to actually play with the app and go forward um, before they actually commit to anything. So the free trial period is actually working very well for parents. Once you've downloaded the GoPenting app, whether it's from the Google Play Store or it's from the website, um, you're going to register your cell phone number, you're going to set your password, you're going to enter the other parent's um, co-parent cell phone number, um, and you're just going to follow the prompts to actually enter the, the minor child's details and then also the existing shared arrangements that you actually have. When you start your co-parenting journey, um, the main idea that we have around this is that it's actually going to give you peace of mind. In other words, let's say, for example, we have parents that do not have a parenting plan, but they download the app. The prompts will actually lead them to actually get to a point where we will link them with a mediator so that we can get a formal court order in place, which eventually is going to be a win-win situation for all service providers um, that's um, part of this whole ecosystem. If you look at the first um, uh, screen that I'm showing to you right now, the secure messaging, um, it's in the app. You will get specific, um, you will get specific um, messages around it. In other words, any parent can actually um, log a, um, a, sorry, every parent can actually 
and put something on the app and the notification will go to the other parent to go and have a look on what was um, happening in the specific um, scenario and we will then be able to see um, what was the communication. Again, if I take um, some of the um, cases that I've been mediating um, previously, and sometimes parents forget to um, notify the other parent of a parenting meeting at school, um, or there's been a um, request for um, a dental appointment, they've got a probation, and um, they think they've got consent to continue with the expense, and um, it just didn't happen. In other words, um, all of this communication, if you get a quotation for, for the dental appointment, um, you will load it on the app. We will send a note, the app will send a notification to the other parent and you or she will have the opportunity to actually approve the expense or decline the expense. Um, this complete record um, um, of, of stored communication will stay in the app. If it's necessary and we've got the consent of the parties um, and the mediator, we will be able to download um, this communication should it be necessary um, to approach the bench for whatever reason. If it's not necessary, this communication will not be shared um, with any third party or any other person. With copy in mind and everything, um, the minus details have been masked. Um, this is not a this is not a, a, a platform where I'm going to discuss this, but I can assure you, um, with all the professionals um, being part of this um, exercise, we've made very sure that the minus details are um, more than secure. Um, specifically because we're also working with Crystal and, and Kevin in um, um, Europe, they've even got um, more strict um, security and firewalls and things going forward. I already spoke about the language filter. Tries, we are actually trying to keep um, messages amicable. So there's a little um, line that's going to, it's almost like a thermometer, and it's going to go from green to um, orange to red, um, if it's going to be an aggressive message. And the main reason about, um, around that is that we try to keep the messages amicable. And if I say amicable, um, I must tell you that that I think that we've underpinned a lot of the swear words, but on a daily basis, um, I learn new swear words, and I thought that um, um, I know a lot of swear words, and I actually don't. So if you come across swear words um, or um, really harsh words, um, please help us um, to um, limit the, the use of these words. One thing that's very important to remember about the secure instant mes messaging is that it's not possible um, to delete these messages. Once you've sent the message, it's going to stay there. Um, and hopefully um, that's going to um, help in high conflict um, matters um, to let people rethink um, the message before they actually sent it. I already spoke about the transcripts, and that's available should and ever be and ever necessary um, to get these transcripts. Okay, if we look at the multifunctional um, app, I'm, I'm, I'm back to um, the main um, screen. Once you've actually regist registered your app, you can, or you've registered on Google Play, and, the, and, and you've actually um, logged in, this is the screen that you will see. There's various options here, the expenses, the, the shared calendar, the instant communication platform, 
and the CPB listing, which is the consumer profile and listing for maintenance obligations, which I will touch on a little bit later, because we've already um, um, had a, a, a CPD training um, around um, why is maintenance obligations necessary um, to be part of your, your credit profile. And this is the first in the world. It's not only um, um, our co-parenting app, but, but if you look at um, a world scenario, um, this is a, a, a first in the world um, when it comes to linking the, the credit industry um, with the Department of Justice um, when you deal with maintenance obligations and the underpin of the legislation and the uh, um, judgments and Supreme Court of Appeal, um, it's all there. It's, we've had that discussion, so I'm not going to even try and repeat it tonight because then I'm going to talk to you till about 10 o'clock and I'm sure that you don't want to speak to me till 10 o'clock tonight. So the resource directory or the assistance directory, for me that's important that, that you as service providers, as, as mediators, and um, become part of this ecosystem because we obviously want to render the best service possible um, for our families um, in dispute in South Africa. So please submit your information and become part of the, the eco ecosystem. And um, let's see um, how we can actually change what we're doing for, for parents um, in, in South Africa. The next screen that, that our parents is actually going to see is, is this screen when they're starting to load um, the various children. You've got one child or two children. You can actually add their name and the and the um, uh, birth date, um, and you will specifically see um, what the shared calendar is actually going to look like. If you don't have a specific um, um, co-parenting agreement, and you would like to try one of the preloaded shared calendars, um, it's actually available. It's typical calendars. We've had um, quite a few discussions with um, psychologists and social workers. So the shared calendars was not something that we found such. Um, it's mediators that's been part of, of the system, accredited mediators that's been part of the system for quite a while. This whole parenting um, app started with Parnell Boucher um, and um, most of the development or the, the, the start of this whole development um, was actually Tarnell Boucher's work. And I think most of you do um, know that at this stage, um, she is actually in Australia and she's also still one of our partners in the co-parenting app um, going forward. So there was a lot of development and and and. and and psychological um, 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 issues that was discussed before we actually put this whole shared calendar um, and we actually made it available for our mediators to make your life easier when you do sit with parents and they need to explore various options. Is it going to be shared um, residency? Is it going to be one week, one week? Or um, how is this actually going to pan out every alternative weekend? and things like that going forward. So that's our shared calendar, and, and you can actually customize it um, according to um, the minor child's um, specific age, because we know that all of this is also obviously um, age appropriate. If you look at the um, sharing of special moments, part of the first phase of the app, um, we do not include the minors in sharing any details on the app. We would like our minor children to actually participate um, in the co-parenting app because obviously they should be part of this whole ecosystem. But one of the things that we still need to um, sort out is the expenses part. We don't want our minor children um, to have access to um, parents um, talking about um, dental um, accounts or not 
paying maintenance or any of those things. So there's certain um, data that we need to mask and that's not filtered out yet. That's going to be phase two um, or three of the app that we're going to roll out where we're going to get minor children to actually submit this happy moment um, or to submit um, um, details of a, a, a tennis tournament or a choir event or whatever the case might be, um, what our children actually participate in. And um, there's a parent meeting or um, I've just received my um, report um, for the quarter of the first quarter. And um, this is how I'm sharing this with my parents or I caught my first fish or whatever the case may be. There's a lot of happy moments that we, that we would actually like to share. Um, with our um, children. Let's go to the management of the financial commitment. The management of the financial commitment is obviously in terms of an existing court order. If there's no existing court order, um, then we will um, prompt the parents to actually um, go to an alternative dispute resolution practitioner to assist them with getting a formal court order in place. In other words, um, once they start using um, the co-parenting app, this app is going to be in terms of a specific court order. And I would like to um, use a, an example when it comes to this. Um, let's say the court order is going to specify um, that the parents share the educational expenses um, on a 60-40 basis. You can set the expense 60-40 um, and um, at the beginning of the year, when we all have, or the end of the year, some of the parents now have at the end of the year, um, you get your um, list of stationery and um, textbook requirements for the next year. Um, and uh, people need to share this expense in terms of a court order. You will then be able to load the quotation that you received from um, the high school or the primary school or whatever and then you um, the app will actually do the calculation so if it's a thousand rand and it's a 60 40 split the other parent um, will actually um, get the notification that this is the um, expense and um, his or her share of the expense is x amount once the expense has been paid the parent um, that received the money will be able to confirm that, that the expense has been shared and that um, the commitment has actually been um, fulfilled. We allocate that child specific. That, that's the one thing um, that, that's very great to see. And then also we keep a, a copy of um, the invoice or the quotation um, and again, should it be necessary for whatever reason, um, we will be able to extract this data. Um, again, in, in my practice, I see on a on a regular basis when parents come in and they say, um, you know, the, the maintenance has not been paid for five years or 10 years or three years. And you look at the court order and you ask them, but you need to be able to draft um, some kind of schedule of payments, parents need to go and find the invoices or the proof of the expenses. And this is actually making it so easy. Um, you click, um, you scan it, you put it on the expense, and it's actually done, and it's there um, forever. Now, I specifically want to talk about maintenance and why this slide. We are part of the GBV um, um, exercise, the Chikululu um, gender-based violence, where we specifically work with economical and emotional abuse. Gender-based violence, one of the focus points is actually maintenance. We they um, focus on the fact that should a parent not 
pay his maintenance for his or her maintenance. Um, I don't want to exclude or in, include any um, gender, so please excuse me if I use his or her. It's economical abuse. And if you if you take it down um, to to the ground level, or you take it home, if you look at the um, Roy Rosa, um article, which was unfortunately in Afrikaans, and I was hoping that somebody can actually um, translate it in English. But it, but if you look at the Roy Rosa article, you will see um, that what is maintenance actually all about? All of this, these discussions that we have the legislation and maintenance and maintenance officers and whatever. For me, it's very high level and it's very cold, but if you take it home, maintenance is a child that's missing a quiet tour or not, not attending an event when they go to um, um, the museum on a Friday, an educational event, missing um, a tennis tournament, because mom and dad is not sharing um, the maintenance. It's a child that's going to bed that was fed. It's a mom or a dad not missing a meal because they're trying to feed a child. And if you think about it like that, then maintenance actually becomes something completely different. Now, the next slide is is something that I've borrowed from um, the Western Cape um, maintenance dialogue um, that we attend um, on, on a monthly basis um, at the NPA. This is statistics that, that they brought forward to say, this is more or less um, the minimum average cost that we need to look at when we do a calculation um, for the living expenses um, of a minor child. And they've based it on information that they got from SA Stats um, and, and, and. So this is just something interesting to see that we eventually moving into a direction where we more or less move away from the fact that we are discretionary um, um, proportionately according to the means and system where we're starting to get an idea of what is the average living cost of a minor child and, and, and where is this actually going to take us? Now I want to bring you back to the cold discussion of um, the legislation. And without spending too much time on this, I'm going to tell you about the national credit regulations that actually say that maintenance obligations must form part of your credit profile of consumers credit profile when they apply for for the credit in other words your, when a credit provider is going to do a affordability um, assessment when we as parents apply for further credit your maintenance obligations is supposed to form part of that profile it's never been implemented not through the department of justice and um, although we've got all the indicative legislation to say that this is supposed to happen. The Co-Parenting Act and the Social Justice Maintenance Services is the first conduit that's available for parents and for mediators, professionals in South Africa to assist parents to actually list the maintenance obligations of the clients that they're dealing with. If parents are not doing that um, themselves, they can actually submit the information themselves. Although we're going to take them through a verification process, and I'm going to touch on that um, as well very, very quickly. I'm sure that you know that we um, all are aware of this um, Supreme Court of Appeal um, judgment um, that we received. The long and the short of it is that maintenance orders will only prescribe after 30 years, not three. What does that mean? Should a parent come to you for um, a maintenance dispute and there is a real maintenance? In other words, we've got an existing court order already. 
with normal debt, it can actually prescribe after three years if there was no kin taken. It's not the same with arrear maintenance. You can claim arrear maintenance with interest for 30 years. In other words, if you do sit down with a client and there's arrear maintenance, you should be able to assist them with making a calculation of the arrear maintenance, drafting a schedule of payments, um, applying the correct um, interest, and then um, submitting the details to um, to start with, I would like you to submit the rear maintenance to um, the social justice maintenance portal, if not through the app, um, and then this information will reflect um, on the um, in in two ways on on the um, person's um, credit profile. The current maintenance will be one listing. And, and the second listing will actually be the adverse listing or the default listing to say that the rear maintenance has been calculated, it's been verified, and, and this is the total amount outstanding. Should the parent apply for any further credit, the credit provider will then have to take this listing or the rear maintenance into account. And this is taking me to um, the next slide um, where we will actually have um, the loan application process. And I'm just going to um, um, talk about this very quickly. Where, as a parent, um, let, I'm going to use myself in, as an example. I will go to Vodacom or Fluid or maybe to APSA to apply for a home loan. Um, and they will ask me to sign a consent to do a credit check um, to see what um, what is my credit score. At this stage, if you do a credit check or a credit score via a credit bureau, the maintenance obligations is not included. Although we have this change in legislation since March 2015, it's never been implemented, and that was one of the main reasons for actually creating this ecosystem, creating this conduit for our parents in South Africa and for our service providers, our mediators, because that's one of the things that we get stuck on is the rear maintenance. Long story short, the, 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 maintenance, is, the maintenance obligations and also your rear maintenance is going to appear on the Consumer Profile Bureau. From the Consumer Profile Bureau, the other 44 bureaus will be able um, to access this information. The minus details to start off with has been masked. So none of the minus details will ever go to the credit environment. Only the amount of maintenance and the person responsible for paying this maintenance, whether it's a VS or current maintenance, will appear on the credit profile bureau display system. Um, why do we say we need responsible lending um, in South Africa? The social justice maintenance services um, is, is the free service to the public that's going to be um, the entity that you will also use or the co-parenting app um, or through your um, practice management software where you will be able to um, submit or assist your clients to submit this information so that it can become part of the credit environment. Why do I say that? If I apply for maintenance, of, or if I apply for credit now and I've got a current maintenance order, it's not going to be on my credit profile. It's not part of our credit profile, although it's been in our legislation since March in 2015. So how are we going to actually help our children? We're going to submit the information. Um, through the um, the various processes, um, and then we're also going to um, um, verify this information. It's not going to be a, a, a one-step process. As you can see, it's going to be a six-step process. The main reason for that is the National Credit Regulator and also our credit bureau environment and the credit providers need to work with accurate, up-to-date, 
And obviously the compliance um, around this data is very, very strict to make a long story short. So we will take parents parents through a compliance process. Let's say the one parent is actually going to submit this information. We will make contact um, with the other parent to actually ask them if this information is correct, if it's up to date, if there's a dispute. Obviously, this dispute will be um, submitted to um, a, a mediator to assist them. And this is training that's going to be um, completely separate from the session because there's very specific um, deadlines that we need to work with. Um, for example, the, the um, National Credit Regulator um, stipulate if a dispute has been declared, we've got 20 working days um, to resolve this dispute. As you know, um, when it comes to maintenance obligations, um, it's going to be tough to do that, but we need to be aware of um, this is a maintenance dispute coming from a creditor, and we need to deal with this in a very specific um, scenario. If you can just give me one second, I just want to close this door quickly. <laughs> Okay. This is our social justice maintenance services website. As you can see, it doesn't matter if you put in maintenance services.org or .co.za, it's going to take you to exactly the same portal and you will be able um, to submit your um, maintenance obligations for verification before we actually submit it to the credit bureau. So, so the process is going to go through. And we also involve, obviously, both parents. And if you're a third party, you will also get a notification to say the information has been verified and we will now submit the information to the credit bureau environment. This is what the maintenance orders portal look like. We're asking our parents to specifically um, submit the inf information um, themselves if the mediator is not going to assist them in doing that. And one of the things that we, we need to start talking about, because it's been part of that um, judgment that we referred to earlier, is we now have a maintenance creditor and a maintenance debtor. It's new lingo um, that we were all. Um, become used to using going forward. And I think it's um, for most of us, we, we, we know who's the creditor and who's the data in, in this specific um, scenario. Going back to the assistance resource directory, the assistance res resource directory is specific for our people, um, our professional people that want to um, work with family matters, that's accredited mediators, or child psychologists, or social workers. In other words, all the professionals that's rendering a service um, to families um, in South Africa for now. Although the co-parenting app has been opened up to um, more countries um, all over the world, um, most of the things that we do specifically around the listing of real maintenance is very specifically focused on South Africa, the shared calendars uh, um, and the happy moments is something that's generic that we will be able to use in any country. And the shared moments and the, the um, shared calendars we can even use for parents that's very, very busy um, and they've got a, a pair or a third party looking after their children, grandparents um, that actually need to um, to um, get the children from school to um, um, sports and 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 whatever and we all know the scenario um, in our busy lives if you go to the co-parenting app and you're interested and um, you will submit your your details and um, it will be verified and you will be able to um, then um, be on the directory of the co-parenting app um, and form part of this ecosystem where you have the possibility, it's a marketing opportunity, and you will have the possibility um, of actually generating um, work from what we do going forward.
it's a typical registration. I've just shown you um, my um, submission. If you go to the um, co-parenting app um, or directory at this stage, you will see that it's actually been taken off. The idea is not for me to generate any further work. Um, I will be holding the brick and the work will be distributed to the mediators that's um, been vetted and um, or active um, participants um, in this whole ecosystem that we're building to um, look after our families in South Africa. Why do we need professional oversight or permission for our parents? Our parents may agree to give a professional um, assisting them access to oversee the interactions on the app. In other words, um, once parents is registered on the app um, as a mediator, you can have overviewing the um, rights to see the communication. You don't need to, in, uh, to do anything. You will just have uh, uh, oversight of what's actually um, happening um, in the implementation of the co-parenting um, agreement that you've mediated. It's a professional online access on the co-parent web website um, to cases and to inter and interactions. Why do we say that? Well, in every scenario, your co-parent or your um, parents using this app is actually going to need um, the assistance of a mediator. Sometimes it's necessary um, for our trauma counsellors or our psychologists or parenting coordinators or attorneys to be able to take over um, the case. And the parents will grant permission and the case will be moved um, to the professional um, in the ecosystem that now need to resolve whatever the issue might be. Let's say, for example, um, we need to send our parents for um, parenting skills or um, they need to um, get a little bit more information around why, what, what's happening in, in the attachment and detachment theory and why do I need to understand this as a, as a parent. Then we will refer them to um, a specific professional or let's say it's about uh, parental rights and uh, parental alienation and um, we will refer them to a professional that will be able to guide them and explain to them the pros and cons of what's happening in this scenario and and what's going to happen <laughs> when pus is actually applied in this scenario says parental alienation what is the impact going to be on that child and um, over the next 10, 15, 20 years. And maybe that's going to help in a change in, in behavior in going forward. So again, the professional oversight of the mediator for us is very, very um, important. Okay, that, that's my whole presentation when it comes to um, the big picture of the co-parenting app and um Teresa if it's okay with you maybe there's um some questions um that I can take before I hand over to Crystal and um, which is going to tell us about the um, further step in in using the mediation practice management software um that's got an API integration into the app in other words um, parents will be able to directly link to the service provider that's part of our ecosystem. So is there any questions um, that from the floor that I can answer before I hand over to Crystal um, that's going to tell you more about the practice management software um, that's been developed? Anybody switch, switch on your camera, show us your face, stick up your hand? Um... In the comments, there hasn't been any questions of late, Annika. Um, so, anybody else with a question? See a couple of familiar faces here tonight. It's extremely quiet. I think everybody's preparing for the long weekend. Must be. Must be. 
Okay, doesn't seem to be any questions. Maybe we can go over to Crystal. Oh, we've got one. Mabana has got a question. Mabana, switch on your camera, switch off your mute, and let's hear. How can we assist? I um I think it's not really a question, basically, but it's a comment that um I think it will make for me it will make more sense once it's in practice. You know, I can't wait to download it and start you know, working around it. So I'm waiting for that. So maybe thereafter, when one starts, you know, exploring, we have some questions on the on it. Thank you. Yeah, Mabana, that it, I think it's a good idea to actually go and play around. As I said, Annika said, there's a three month um, free option to parents available as well. So it's maybe also a good idea to maybe go just see what it's about. Um, I've started recommending it to parents on my side as well for um, including it in a plan for my parents because the cost is really not high. And I I must say it, it, it can make a huge difference to your client base. It really can. Anybody else? Crystal, then we're going to give you an opportunity to tell us. Thank you. Thank you, Teresa. Thank you, Annika, for having me on this uh, conference. Um, on the annual mediation conference in November, we already talked about the exciting developments and challenges for mediation, uh, not only in South Africa, but also for us in Belgium and in Europe. And we talked about the new developments that are um, that we created also. So therefore, I will present you our management mediation software program that we released uh, last year in Belgium. It's called Wadi. Um, it's about how to start running your mediation practice into the future and how to grow your practice and how you can best support your clients and support your practice. First, maybe I like to uh, present ourselves. Um, my my uh, co-founder, Kevin Mons, who is an it -er. He, uh, and myself, we developed together the best mediation software program, as we used to call it, when we start to develop it. So I really came to the mediation through my work as a family lawyer. I started uh, almost 30 years ago uh, as a lawyer at Flemish Bar in Belgium. And I was dealing with a lot of divorces and child custody cases uh, where parents and uh, partners were always in conflict with each other. And in my work as a juvenile lawyer of advocate, I mostly saw what these conflicts did to children. So at this time, I realized I missed some of the human part in my work and started training as a family mediator. And that was in 2003. So um, that was even before the mediation was put into law in Belgium in 2005 by the first steps then. And I have been practicing as a mediator in family matters since then. So I did some academic work around the mediation as a guest lecturer in family law and started focusing on how uh, mediators can be, uh, can practice, can they do it in multidisciplinary uh, practices, um, how they can increase the quality of mediation, and if it would be better if you can work together as an independent mediator with lawyers, with psychologists, with coaches, counselors, therapists, social workers, and other disciplines, how to get the best out of your business. So 
how to develop your practice as it is important to focus on the mediation process itself. So as 95% uh, of my cases in uh, before COVID in my lawyer practice were focused on mediation, I noticed that the uh, uh, difference in the work approach is uh, very much different from the work approach as a lawyer. So mediation and mediation, you work much faster in, in the files and there is a larger turnover and the work processes are very different. If you are sitting as a lawyer, you work behind your desk into the files, but the mediation is all about the uh, sessions and the work and talking and uh, communication with your clients. So I talked to Kevin about this problem as an IT -er and ask him if there was any suitable software for mediation on the market, because the software I, I used as a lawyer was uh, not, didn't work anymore for me. So as there weren't, as there wasn't, um, we started to work together on this uh, software and de start developing it. And we started by the following questions. What does the mediation office of the future will look like? What is needed? What should it look like? And how do you want to address this in group as a business or as an individual? How do you start up as a mediator? All these questions are at the base of development. So what are the expectations of this and the next generation of the mediators? How do they see mediation? And what angles should be looked at? How should a modern working environment be set up? And what are the pain points in a mediator's daily work routine? And what does the future of mediation is really look like? looking like so we really work together and and every week we sat together and together being able to speak the both languages of tech that's the input of kevin and of mediation that was the input of me so we knew what was possible on the tech side and what the constraints were on the mediation side and the legal side um so Wally is has become a management software program that works mm -hmm. really in support for the mediator. But also, as I worked in a multidisciplinary practice with uh, therapists and with psychologists, they were interested in this program. And um, they looked over my shoulder and they said, oh, we will use this. That's also convenient for us, this program. So um, we, we talked, Kevin and I talked to each other and said, yeah, it's um, going to be really a management software program for mediators, but also for the counselors and the coaches and the therapists. So we developed it as well and put it on the market. And it's uh, being used uh, in Belgium and not being able to be used in South Africa. Um, you can work more efficient with your clients. You and where we started is that you get immediately an overview of what happened in your case. I will show you this on the screen uh, in a while. There is a useful timeline around timeline around which the whole software is built and in which you can perfectly follow the progress of your case. From the intake, the mediation protocol, the documents, to the agreement and the signing of the agreement and the homologation in court. You can follow this in your timeline. And with more st structure, you get more inside view. You get better results and you focus on what really comes on the mediation itself with your clients. And they will feel this and they will 
um, uh, talk about it and they will, when they use the co-parenting app, they will, will uh, go soon, uh, faster to the, to the uh, mediator through who is connected um, with this mediation software. So the change to a software package, package must be seen as the opportunity to improve inefficient work processes and to improve even good work processes. The purpose of the software program is to increase your efficiency, to lighten up your work and therefore to brighten up your days. And um, it really um, supports you and uh, does grow your practice. So um, as a mediator has not usually learned how to run a business or set up a business plan, it requires a business approach. And having a mediation practice involves a number of activities. And the field work, of course, and the conversations and the mediation ses sessions, the billable content, and all the other time-saving, tedious activities, the exchange of letters, the mails, calendar, ag agenda, editing agreements, invoicing. So the Wally software is built to make this much more efficient and for both these activities. So mediators who use the software program uh, for among other uh, digital communication and payment follow-up uh, can handle, of course, more clients, more mediation files, you gain time. Um, you have a faster follow-up uh, of your administration also. You make uh, not only the experience to these tedious activities as less annoying and even more pleasant. And um, this way you start to profile yourself more professionally. And that's very important. Um, you get a better workflow and um, just realize more design. Today, uh, we have time to explore no more on how Wally is being used and to learn more about the experiences um, about use of Wally. So I'm going to um, share my screen. Hope I succeed. Can you see this? Yeah. Okay, wait, huh? I have to see it also. So this is the wadi.software website. And as you see, there is an English first version made for South Africa. Uh, for connection, especially. Um, if you go to the downside, you find out what Wally can do for you. You have the case management, file management, the timeline I talked about, diary management, mailing and correspondence, sound recordings, time registration and invoicing, and of course, GDPR security. Um, and GDPR in South Africa is also- It's called the Poppy Act. Yeah, that's, that's right, yeah, forgot. So we will check out these futures and um, we will go downside to, all the websites. You go to the login. I have a demo version. And you look in and this is your first view. As you see, dashboard, 
you can click on your dashboard and that's the first thing you see. Your calendar, who, which can be linked to your Google agenda or uh, other agenda that you use. Um, you have here to-dos that you put in and tasks that you have put for some, put um, and have to do in some files. And at the bottom of the set, you have uh, your files of your cases. I will go to one of the cases, get a view. And the first thing you see here is, this is your case, your file. Um, you see the timeline. And if you go at the bottom side, you will see, oh, this file, this started at the 12th of July on the 2021. 20, and um, there was an intake about the divorce. And yeah, the main thing you put in is, oh, the man has two children and he has to get out of the house. Everything you do in your file will be put on this, this timeline. So there was an email on 8th of August. You see all your emails you put in. There, there were appointments and so on and so on. And this is very clear. For, so when your clients come to you and you will prepare your, your file, you can easily go through your file and see what happened and prepare on a really good base uh, everything um, that has happened in the file. Um, the use of, of the software program is very easy. Um, you have your number of your file, so you will find it really easy as well. If um, you put in the names, you find it also very easy. Uh, to do's, you can put in on an easy way. I have to um, make a payment, payment on the 14th of, on the, no, that's in the past, eh? on the 22nd of March, save, and it will appear. No, it didn't appear. Save. On oh, here, yeah, payment, 2nd of March. If you have, done your to do, you will click it out and it will be put in your file and it will be an visible on your timeline that you have done at this time, the payment. You put in your own appointments on a very easy way. Um, Crystal is going to uh, visit me and have an appointment tomorrow. Location in my town, my hometown. I will invite them, my client as well. And I cannot see this after. I will save it. And immediately, again, with my appointment, your clients will have the appointment by mail that the appointment is foreseen on that date. Incoming mails, you can swipe them. If you work with Outlook of another program, you can swipe them here drag them and drop them in. Outgoing mails, the same way, you can drag and drop them, or you can make an outgoing mail yourself on an easy way to Jan Janssen, you put in your message, at and send. And also your mail will be 
seen on the timeline. The billing is made also to be very easy experience. You will bill Jan Janse and Peter Peterson or together or separately. This is still in Dutch, but means he has still to pay. They have still to pay off. There is already paid. You pay cash by mobile pay, deposit or provision. You say I had a session. Which method per uh, hour amount and the price is 90 rand. Put in preview and you have your invoice, numbering of invoice and um, you can save it or you can save it and send it. It will be viewable. Here you can see these invoices have still to be paid. If they have been paid, you set, set the status paid. You can download the invoice for your um, accountant. Uh, you convert it to credit note, uh, edit it if it's not sent. Um, the quotation or and the quotation, yeah, maybe you have to see it. Um, the same way, always uh, the same prepare quotation for your Janssen clients. Uh, on the same way, you can do it the same way. I'm going to, back to the dashboard. You see, so if you want the overview of your files, you go to this page and you can see I have this much files, I will go into this file, test file, um, come on my dashboard, um, what is maybe explicable, the time re registration. Uh, if you're working in your um, file and you had an appointment, it will be put into the time registration immediately. But you can also start your own time registration. If you are maybe studying the file, or if you are looking for something, uh, you can put in yourself a new one. Did it on today, started at 18, ended something later, test. Description, safe, and it is registered. If you want an overview, I'm sorry that didn't work. If you want an overview of your performance, you can get it really easy and see everything that is done into uh, your file. Um, the time you've put into it, and you can send it with the billing to your clients if necessary and if requested. Your documents, everything that they will um, provide or that you need the protocol, you can drag it and drop it here and save it. Also, there is there are standard documents like the protocol or like a um, uh, divorce agreement you can put here. Notes is for the easy use of um, the file when you have something very important that you uh, need, to know, need to know immediately. Immediately, I put it into the notes. So. When I uh, see my timeline and I see my notes, I have a complete overview of my file. I will end with the uh, audio recordings. The audio recordings, I don't know how, if it is used much in South Africa, but we use it here 
uh, to record conversations if allowed. And um, if something is um, needed, you can easily go to your auto audio recordings and um, get an update of what you talked about. So that's a slight overview of um, the practice management software. Also important that you have an overview of all your clients. Um, you see that we've um, provided also uh, the consultants and the courts. Uh, the agenda can be used as a calendar, can be used as a list. Either way, um, you like it. An overview of your billing. Each month or each Friday, the way even the way you work, you get you go to your overview. What has been paid? What have, has not been paid? Who um, have I? Uh, will I send a message to that still there is an open bill? Um, this is a really easy way to work with. So I think I've said the most. I hope um, this is already a bit of a, an overview and that you see how it works. When we go to um, our screen, I'm going to try. I'm going to log out. Um, this is the old version. Going to Ravi software. Hmm. So you see what the Wally benefits are. You can 100% focus on the conversations. You have your automated administration, no paperwork anymore, accessible anywhere, anytime on your uh, computer, on your iPad, on your iPhone, on your phone, um, and including a useful invoicing tool, very important. The question I can hear already is what is the cost of this practice management software? Uh, well, I will let you give you a view. We have the starter package with one license, with one account, a management account for your organization, shared cases with other members of your organization, if you work in a multidisciplinary organization and unlimited numbers of files. You can try it 90 days for free by free login at 70, at 750 ZAF a month. Um, the most popular package is the package with the document templates and the linked calendar. That's at 950 ZAF a month, and then we have still um, an all inclusive package, but that's for large companies and they have an extra on demand training. So feel free to do the free trial for 90 days. Contact us, we will help you by using it, we will uh, guide you through. Um, our practice management management software, and we will be ready to um, answer all your questions. Voila. So now I will stop there. Um, any questions from the from the floor? Um, just quickly, Christelle. So from my side, how applicable would that be? This software also be for coaches, counselors, um, people like um, that? Totally applicable um, because um, 
either you work as a mediator or as a counselor, you work in, or, or as a therapist, you have the same um, sort of work. You work with your clients and um, you can use the software uh, completely on, in the same way. There is, uh, a, well, I don't know how, how to say it in English. Um, there's yes, some it, it's, yeah, it creates, it's the hmm? same process. Um, because That's I, the same process. The, but yes, I think different. what makes Wally so special versus other legal software is the fact that you can add multiple clients and it has that functionality that's really actually quite efficient for counselors um, and that sort of people, coaches, that sort of people. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. yeah. Any questions? No questions. No, I think Anik is right. Everybody's preparing for the long weekend. <laughs> no one has a question. Ryan, stop smiling. I know you got a question. <laughs> it's just I know the question from me already, but I wanted to ask. <laughs> yes, I, I must say this is a very user friendly um, software. Um, thank you, Crystal and Kevin, for developing this. Um, I think it is going to be a game changer for mediators counselors psychologists I, I i just cannot you know, the more you play with the system the more you realize the possibilities for other disciplines as well any other questions well Bana, you've got much technology to play with this weekend you're going to have to go and check out the co-parent app and the wally software I'm picking on her and she's not there. <laughs> Teresa, for, for interest's sake, um, there's a, a 60 day trial period, and we, we're asking the people on the group tonight um, to download the practice management software and to work with it and test it. Um, don't you think it's a good idea um, that we maybe consider um, scheduling a follow up session um, in about 60 days time so that we can get real feedback on um, have you tested a system um, how do you see it what's your suggestions um, and um, going forward um, really trying to implement um, what we give what we're actually giving the, the um, professional environment mm -hmm. um, what, what does the floor say um, about doing something like this to say let's see this as a test group we test the app, we test the practice management software um, and give us honest feedback from, from your professional environment, and whether you're a social worker or a debt counsellor or a trauma counsellor, a mediator counsellor, um, a mediator, um, lawyer, whatever the case may be. Um, it's just a suggestion. Well, it looks like I'm the only one that's answering. <laughs> I think it's a great idea. <laughs> okay, then maybe ask a, a show of hands or a, a wave or a whatever, and who would be able to... <laughs> no, not that show of hands. Don't we um, have emojis? Albana's asking, asking questions. She says, is the app compatible to any format of documents? For instance, Word and PDF? Yes. Uh, yes, it is. Yeah. PDF. Think it's a good idea. Yeah. We've got mm -hmm. So it's applicable for you. You swipe it in as PDF. You have to put your words into the PDF. Huh? So. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then maybe if we can ask um, Crystal or, or Kevin, um, uh, please put that link um, in the chat for us where people can get to your website immediately where they can actually um, download the, the um, app. Mm -hmm. 
for the practice management software. So I want to register and actually play with the account. I don't yeah. see the link in the in, um, in the chat here. You have to go to Wally.software. Voila, oh, no. Kevin put it in. <laughs> Thank you, Kevin. Voila, oh, no. that's the link. Okay, wonderful. Here we go. So um, there's the link for everyone. And they can download the uh, or visit the, the website and go and read more about it and register the account play with it and then obviously we're going to ask you and talk to us and tell us what you think um, once you've worked with um, the practice management software and obviously also the co parenting app. So Annika, what is the cost per parent again for the app, for the co-parent app, if we recommend that to our clients? It's 50 rand per annum. So yes, I must I must say that's really affordable per year. 50 rand per parent per year. I mean, please start using that, testing the app. It is really, really a big resource for couples that's arguing. And like Annika said, please go and test the Wally software. You've got a free version for two months at least. And then give us some feedback and see how you, how you feel about it. Mm -hmm. Jackie says, love the co-parent app idea. Fantastic, extremely affordable. Mm -hmm. Anybody else? <laughs> Well, I suppose then we can close this meeting, Teresa. Thank you for hosting it. I would have the long weekend, especially if we're not working tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, thank, you for, thank you for everyone um, that actually um, attended the meeting, um, especially Crystal and, and Kevin all the way from Belgium. And then um, I'm not going to exclude all our special members in South Africa. Um, thank you for listening to us. Thank you for participating in this project and we really look forward to seeing you soon thank you for having us thank you for your presentation Annika great as always good night everybody sleep tight goodbye goodbye everyone all the best bye bye <laughs>